Hi there, and thanks so much for joining me for another tutorial. I'm Erin Eno, and today we're going to be painting this zoomed in, square cropped, bright two toned cosmos. So grab your paints and let's get started. So for today's painting, I'm going to be using my Baohong Academy cold press watercolor paper. It's 140 pound, 100% cotton. I've trimmed it down to seven and a half by seven and a half and just taped a border on all four sides. I have my uh, Royal Talons Van Gogh paints in my palette. I have a jar of water, paper towel. I have a scrap piece of paper. Whoops, almost lost my paper towel. I have a scrap piece of paper here on hand if I want to uh, just check uh, colors as I go. And for brushes, I've grabbed a few. I've grabbed a really big brush. It's a Curry's 2500 series. Um, I don't know if I'll need a brush this big, but it has a really awesome point on it. Um, and it's almost my favorite brush right now. So I may or may not use that. I also have a size 10 in their 2500 series, and I have a size 6 in their 2400 series and I have a Princeton snap in a size two round. You'll also need a paper, a paper towel. No, well, yes, but that's not what I wanted to say. You'll also need a pencil and an eraser because we're going to draw this out. And I, of course, for this one, have a reference photo. I found this on the internet and I just thought it was really pretty. And I kind of liked the square format of it and the fact that it was kind of cut off on some edges and I thought that would make a really cool painting so that's what we're going to give a try today and I have done no practice on this so um, fingers crossed. I will also um, pop that picture up on the screen at the beginning so you can take a screen capture of it if you want um, so you have it as a reference as well. Okay, so to start, I'm going to start in the middle with the, um, I don't know what the middle of the flower is called. It's not really a stamen, I guess, but we'll call it the center of the flower. And it's kind of tilted on its side just ever so slightly. So I just want to draw in a little rough kind of circle to start. And I'm drawing it really lightly at first, and then I'll darken it up so you can um, see it better but just for my sake right now I just want it light and there's a little few little kind of stamens sticking up that you can see from this angle when you get around to this side because it's on a little bit of a curve you only see like the tops of them so I don't know if you can see that but like I said I will darken it in I'm thinking this might be a little small so I'm just going to Make it a teensy bit bigger, just on this side. Okay, so some of the petals overlap the other ones. I'm wondering if this is too high on the page. I think this might be a little high on the page as well, so I'm going to bring it down a bit. to about here. I know that doesn't seem like a big difference, but it kind of is. And I apologize for the shadows being cast. I'm still kind of working on getting my lighting good. I'll get there. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw one petal and kind of go from there. So I'll start with this one big one that kind of whoops, goes out and curves up, not quite to the edge of our square sheet. And then these petals are kind of uh, wavy at the end, not wavy, kind of rounded little tips on them. So this one comes down and then goes up and goes off the page. And you have to kind of imagine that it's coming around and then it's coming back in once we're back on the sheet. Okay, and 
I don't want to kind of hold myself to try to get this exact because that's just not going to happen. I don't want to spend that much time on the drawing. Okay, so I just wanted to speed up the drawing a bit. Um, I'm going to leave the finished drawing up on the screen a little bit so you have it to look at and take a screen capture of. But basically, just make sure that you, um, you know, follow the petal kind of shape as long as you have those nice curves in there and the scalloped ends on them as I'm drawing here. You don't have to match it exactly. I can't stress that enough. You're going to end up with a pretty flower regardless of whether your petals are exactly as the photograph. So there I'm drawing the scalloped edges again like I mentioned. They're uh, pretty key and pretty important in this flower. Now I'm just going in and defining those little stamen bits um, to make sure that I don't lose those when I paint them. Now I'm just heavying up all the lines so you guys can have a really good look at the finished drawing and here it is. The last step of course is to lighten the pencil lines and then we can get painting. So first things first, like I said, I wanted to get that yellow established. Okay, so I'm just going to use straight up um, Azo Yellow Medium. Okay. And I'm doing it quite, uh, quite pigmented and I'm just going to do some dots. They're not going to show up right now, um, but they will show up better once we get the flower painted around it. So first I just want to do like the little tips. I'm probably doing them a little big, but that's okay. Maybe a, a bit too uniform, but um, they have the brown stems on them, so I can always change the shape of them with the brown stems. And then I'm gonna, I'm going to just dip my brush in my water and just color this whole center with the yellow just as a back a backdrop for the other colors that I'm going to put on top of it. This will just kind of establish the shape of the center. Okay, then I'm going to go back to the heavier pigmented yellow and just put some out here because they are kind of mishmash. Like there's bigger heads on those stems that kind of pop out. Now I have to go in here and of course put some shape and definition in there. I'm trying not to make this too realistic. I don't want to get too carried away with it. Um, but there does seem to be just the slightest amount of green in the center. So I'm just taking some cobalt blue, watering it down, and I'm just going to tap some in the middle. I was hoping that would go a little green, but it did not. So I'm going to tap some yellow on there. I don't want to go in right with green just as long as it's got a little bit of a green hue to it, just right in the very center. And that should do. And then we need to wait for this to dry because I don't want that any of that to bleed when I put the little brown stems in there. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up with my heat tool. Okay, that should be dry enough and still with my number two. I probably could have even used a zero for this because it needs to be really small. So I'm just going to go in with some sepia, just get the excess water off my brush and I'm just going to start painting in these little uh, brown kind of stem things. They're a little wider when they hit the yellow and then they kind of taper in like a cone shape. Okay, again, I don't want to turn this into a super real 
realistic painting, but I didn't want it really loose. I was just more after the vibrancy of the color and the fact that it was square and that it was kind of cut off out of the frame. That's what kind of drew me to this picture and I thought it would be neat to kind of try to recreate that. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with some more Azo Yellow medium with just a touch of yellow ochre and we're just going to kind of do some lines and circles just to get some shape to these little kind of, I don't know what the centers are called. I should look it up. Okay, so I hope you can see what I'm doing, that I'm just painting basically circles, really rough circles, but just circles to get that kind of indication that there's some shape in there. I'm going to add just a little bit of that sepia just to make some of them a little bit darker. This just gives it a little more depth. Because it is on its side or tilted to the side a little bit. Okay, just like that. And I will go into the as a yellow medium again and tap a bit more of it just full strength in the center just over where we did that kind of greenish area and I think that's about it I don't want to like I say I don't want to go crazy on this and make a career out of trying to get this to look like a super real super realistic painting I'm just putting some yellow between these little stamen guys. Just kind of mucking it up, playing it around a bit. Okay, so that's that. And now we're going to go on to the actual petals. And I don't think this color is going to match exactly, but I, th I think I'm just going to do it with quinacridone rose, which is, I will show you on my sheet, which is this color here. Um, the rose would be good too, but I just feel that this is a little more transparent than that and it might be easier to work with. So if you look at the reference photo, it's not actually white through here. It's more of a, and I don't know for how it shows up on camera, but it's almost like a pale pink with a little bit of blue in it. So I'm going to start with, I think I'm going to stick with the cobalt blue. It's not too... Um, what do you, it's not too strong a blue. Okay. And we're just going to go in with the lightest wash and we're going to build this in layers. Okay. But hopefully not real slow layers, <laughs> hopefully kind of quick. So I'm just going to draw, draw, paint some of these lines that you see in the petals. Okay, now we'll be going over them, of course, but I just want to get some blue kind of established in there so we don't lose sight of that. Okay, so of course I'm starting light to dark, right? So just a little hint of blue. And we can do all the petals now because they don't, the blue doesn't go right to the edge and it's not going to touch the petals next to it. Okay, so I'm just putting in little lines of really pale blue. Just like that. You can barely see them, but they're there. The 
it's just to give it this kind of blue bluish undertone and I have to try to be really careful not to overdo this and not to put too much paint on too quickly so I'm just going to speed up and do the blue on the rest of the petals for you Okay, so now that I've got the blue down, I'm just gonna dry that with my heat tool. So now that I see that the blue's there, I'm kind of losing sight of where my petals start and stop. And I know I want to work uh, light to dark, but I'm actually gonna go in right now with straight on quinacridone rose. Okay, so it's quite vibrant. And I've picked up my um, size 12 brush and I've only picked up this brush because it just has such a really fine point on it so I'm gonna go around now and just outline the petals because I'm losing sight of them in with all the blue and the pencil lines are so faint so we will come back in with more color, obviously, and soften this pink out, but I just wanna get it on the page. This is probably not the way I would paint it, um, but this is only because I can't see it. I can't see the pencil lines. I might've gone a little thick there. Okay, so now that I've got that all outlined, I'm wondering now if I have bitten off more than I can chew, but we will see. So I'm going to start with a light, very light wash of that pink. Okay, and I'm gonna stick to this brush because um, I just wanna see if it will do the job. And that's very heavily pigmented. So I'm gonna take most of the pigment off my brush. I'm just gonna test it on this sheet here. That's not too bad. So I'm gonna go in and start at the base. And now I'm just gonna start painting lines of the pink up against that blue. Okay, just like that. And I'm only I'm winging it here. I don't um, I don't know if this is gonna work, but we'll see. So I'm gonna rinse and dry off my brush. I want it still a little damp, and I'm just going to kind of soften these out a bit. Okay, and I'll do another, I was gonna say leaf, another petal the same way. and then I will speed it up as I do the rest of them. So I'm not being very specific here. I'm just trying to lay the foundation down of where this pink is gonna go, okay? I don't wanna cover all the bluish kind of purple. So again, I'm cleaning off my brush. It's still damp. I'm just softening up some of those edges of the pink. And you can still see where it's overlaid the blue that's gone kind of purpley blue. And that's what I wanted here. Okay, so I'm just gonna carry on and do the rest. Okay, so now that we've got a bit of blue, a bit of pink down, I'm going to go in with 
deeper blue and I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now because I really don't want to use uh, I really don't want anything that holds a lot of water so I'm going to go to my number five and I'm going to take just the, the smallest amount of Payne's Gray okay and I'm going to mix it in with the cobalt blue whoops cobalt blue a little bit of Payne's Gray a little more than that I'm going to need more so I'm just going to mix up a bunch cobalt blue Payne's Gray and the quinacridone rose so it's almost purpley color actually I think I want it more blue and more gray a little less of the rose and I want to really whoops I want to really water that down maybe not that much okay so one dip in and one swipe on the edge of my water jar ought to do it and we're just going to go in and put in a few more lines that will be these real sh whoops these real shaded air shadowy lines these shadowy lines okay so this one seems to have the most so i just want to use a very light hand just kind of brush some in almost almost dry brushing okay so i'll put in a few lines like that off the edge of the page then i'll rinse and dry off my brush and just soften up the edge a little bit i don't want it totally soft on both sides because it's supposed to look like the little um, grooves the lines in the petals if that makes sense okay so i'm just going in with a very light hand almost dry brush just adding a bit more in just like that I'll do one more and then I will fast forward it again for you just to speed things up so this one has quite a prominent kind of groove to it so I won't soften it out too much towards this inside edge. And like I say, remember, you're not trying to match your photo exactly. It's just a reference for a guide, okay? So now just clean water and just softening up the edge of them a little bit. You don't want to soften them too much and have them like totally blur out. You want them kind of prominent in some areas. Okay, so I think that's enough for me to speed up. If not, you can slow down the um, your playback speed on your video. Okay, I just don't want this. Um, tutorial to go on too long maybe I'll just do one more petal for you okay so that's another prominent groove there and there's another prominent one here and then we can just do a soft one here so it's prominent but I'm just softening it on one side okay so now I will speed it up and just continue on okay 
Okay, so that's it for the blue. Now we're going to go and start putting in the nice bright pink. And that is just going to be straight quinacridone rose, like I said. And I think I will stick to this number five brush. So I don't know if I've used all the brushes I've had out. I don't think so, but that's okay. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do here, so wish me luck. I think what I'm going to do is just go one petal at a time and I'm going to start with this guy here. So I'm going to go over the pink line that I outlined the petals in in the first place. Because every petal does have a really strong um, pink vibrant pink edge to it. So there's our first petal. And then what I'm going to do is just come in here. And this may not be true to the picture, but it's just kind of to get the effect that I want. Okay, so I'm going to heavy up this line at the top edge and at the base. And then I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm going to tap it off on my paper towel so it's still a little damp. And I'm just going to start blending this out. Just like that. And then here, I think I'll, I think I'll turn my board. So I'm going to start kind of bringing it down. And if it's too dry, which I think it might be, I'm just going to kind of scrub at it a bit. Reactivate it. It's got quite a bit of pink down this side. So you can use creative license here, really. Okay, you don't have to, um, like I say, follow. don't follow the picture exactly or you'll, you'll just go nuts. So what we wanna do is just have a nice soft edge of bright pink all along the outer edge of each petal. So I'm just going to keep adding it and blending it out. So because I went in and tried to rework that pink, it's wet, so it's bleeding in, which is ideal. Okay, because then when it's wet, you can play around with it more. So what I see there is that, you know, some pink comes out here and it also kind of bleeds in to the flower like that. So you can just do little arcs and kind of bring this pink down and tap some more in if you need to and just feather it out with a clean, damp brush. Just like that. You can even go in with just a wash, whoops, with just a light wash of the pink. And you're going pink over pink over that purpley blue, so it's really not going to be that drastic and you can just keep adding some more in. I think the key is just to make sure it's nice and bright around the edges. 
So I'm going to do one more real time petal for you and then I will fast forward for the rest. And I think because the edges are all wet, we're going to move to this guy here. So we'll skip a petal, okay? Now this one has quite a bit of pink on the edge, so I can put quite a bit of paint down there and then a very fine line just to finish the edge there. Okay, and you've got a little bit of pink coming all the way out of the middle here. And like I say, a lot of pink coming down from this top and more than the other petal, which is why I say you don't need to fuss and match exactly. I'm actually going to bring it down like that, see what that gives us. So I mean, I'm kind of playing too, right? So it's trial and error and just a bit of fun. So again, just cleaning off my brush. It's got a little bit of water on it and just feathering this pink out. Okay, so I'm just pushing it down. And I'm going to soften this edge that go, runs along this side of the petal. Then I'm going to clean off my brush to soften that edge completely. And then start softening this out. I think the finished effect will be will be kind of pretty. I hope so. That's the plan. You can see because we're using a transparent pink that when we go over where we have that purpley gray that it's deepening those up. So they are still maintaining that kind of um, shape for us, which was what I was hoping for. And if you don't have a like a bright pink like this, try it in another color. Nice bright blue or bright green maybe. I don't know. Whatever you like. When you go back in with more pigment though, make sure it's pigment and not water. Okay, you don't want to start getting funky blooms. And when you want to go in to move it around, make sure your brush is a little on the drier side. So you can see that I'm basically dry brushing these kind of strokes down. Okay, so that's two petals down. I see a little issue here I'm not happy with. Kind of went wonky. Be careful when you're going down there too. You don't want to reactivate these yellow little heads that are popping through, okay? So again, I'm gonna skip a, a petal and I'll just continue on, but I will speed it up for you. Now I just want to add a little bit more depth and maybe some shading kind of to this side of the center. So I'm just going to take that sepia, maybe this little kind of Payne's gray and blue mixture over here. And just kind of tap in a little bit more depth. I know it doesn't really look like that in the photo, but I just want to make it stand out a little more.
not, not too much, nothing drastic, just a little bit of shading for some depth. And then I'm going to take that same color. Hopefully this is, these flowers are pretty dry. So I just want to add a little bit of shading to this side of that center. I know we're not going for realism here, but just, just a little something. Okay, so I'm going to rinse and dry off my brush and just kind of soften this little bit of shading out. I don't want to reactivate all the pink underneath, but I just wanted a little bit of shadow under there. And I think that's it. So I'm going to take the tape off now and hopefully I'll be as happy with it as I was when I saw the photograph. So there is our zoomed in and square cropped Cosmos flower head. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It takes a bit of time to paint this one, but you can definitely uh, take breaks in between on this one. So I hope you give it a try. And if you do and you're on Instagram, please share and tag me. That's it for today. Take care and I'll see you next time.